Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we're going to be doing my September recap for the top five leagues. We're going to be talking about the major talking points of each of the top five leagues, which teams are underperforming, which teams are overperforming. We'll go through all that. And you know, like I said, guys, you know, a monthly thing, you know, like I said, this one was a little delayed because I was waiting for the, this weekend games to finish before the international break. And I figured it'd be better to upload this before the international break rather than having like, a, you know, one set of games. You know, I figured it'd just be that way. So I'll discuss a little bit of October, but it will mainly be a September review. So without, without further ado, man, let's start with the EPL, man. So when it comes to EPL, man, when it comes to the title race, we all know which we all know which two teams are competing. It's Manchester City and Arsenal. And what makes this title race so interesting is that, well, actually, let me just cut to the chase. Manchester City will win this title. I'm not trying to reverse jinx Arsenal, trying to make Arsenal fans be desperate, be hopeless and whatsoever. I just feel like, for me, Manchester City are the strongest team in this competition. And what makes Manchester City so strong is the amount of depth they have. And remember, they, this is a team that's done it four times in a row. And I know people will tell me that in the comments below, Rodri's out injured and he's pretty much out going to be for the rest of the season but i still feel like even without Rodri, i still feel like city are very difficult to beat and i would say that in terms of most important players i would say holland and kdb and Rodri are the most there are three most integral players and i just feel like for city in particular they are so good especially in the second half of the season and i'm looking at the fixtures they have upcoming which we'll look on to a little later but they have some great fixtures in the month of october like Looking at this, and remember, City had a good month of September. Maybe the only blemish is the draw against Arsenal. But we have to keep in mind, guys, they were, they were in a losing position that game. And they had to score a last-minute goal to salvage the draw. So, I'm looking at Manchester City in particular. I think they're looking great this month, you know. And um, I just think for Manchester City, man, early Holland is just a force of nature, man. It's just a force of nature. So, looking at Manchester City's fixtures we got here. So, Manchester City, they play the next. They play next is going to be against Wolves away, which they should take care of business. Then they play against um, uh, Southampton at home, which they should win. And then they play against Bournemouth away, which they should win. And then um, they play against uh, uh, Brighton away, which they should win. So, really, I'm looking at the next four games. I, I see Manchester City winning all of those games. Um, and for Arsenal, their title con contemporaries. Arsenal, as I said, my thing with Arsenal is that they're looking good, obviously. But I think the thing that worries me with Arsenal is the amount of goals is just that I feel like Arsenal for me, what I really am concerned with is their goal scoring because I just feel like for me, this Arsenal team, as good as they are defensively, defensively they're amazing. Gabriel has been so key for this season for Arsenal, you know, especially in the month of September, he scored two crucial goals against both Tottenham and Manchester City, earning them points on the road in particular. I just feel like what's going to let Arsenal down this season is the attack. I just feel like for me, I need to see more from the likes of Bukayo and you need to see more likes like some Gabriel Jesus has to contribute more, Martinelli. And the thing with Havertz is that I feel like he's a moments player. I think he's a moments player, and I just don't think he's a consistent goal scorer. I don't think he's going to score at a regular consistency. And I think for Havertz, the thing is that if he can be a moments player, that's good for Arsenal. But the thing is they need a consistent goal scorer because Saka, he's good and all, but he will not be able to score in every single game. It's just, that's just too much for him. So I think so Arsenal definitely need Odegaard back, and which I did see that Odegaard will be back towards the latter parts of this month, which will be good for the November games, of course. And yeah, I'm looking at Arsenal, man. Them and uh, City are the only unbeaten teams right now in the Premier League. No other team is unbeaten, and these two are definitely going to be competing for the title. And like I said, guys, I'm still sticking with City to win this title. It's their league to lose. And even though City and Arsenal are level on points, I still think Arsenal... Um, I still think Arsenal Man City will win this title. And looking at Arsenal games, I actually wanted to show you guys real quick. I just show you guys the standings. Let me actually look at Arsenal games real quickly. Arsenal, as you can see right here, guys, they have Bournemouth away. Okay, then they have Liverpool at home. That's a very interesting game. Then they have Newcastle away, and then they have Chelsea away. So this is going to be very difficult for Arsenal. But remember, to be fair to Arsenal, they've been good against the top six teams. In fact, Arsenal haven't lost against the top six, I believe, since I uh, won. It's been a while since they've, uh, you know, lost against the top six, you know, and they're the only team last season to go on being against the top six. So I think for Arsenal, what is it's very key is that they can manage to get that. And I think the only thing I was going to let Arsenal down this month of September was that draw away to Manchester City because obviously, you know, they were in a leading position for the majority of the game and they allow City to get back into the game. And, you know, Arsenal haven't beaten City at the Etihad since 2015. And, you know, City at the Etihad is very difficult to beat. You know, I, I believe the last time City lost against, uh, lost at home was against Brentford, which was, I believe, 2022. You know, 
And I know people are telling me City don't have a good record against the top six. I still feel like, for me, man, City is more consistent throughout the season. And I still feel like, for me, if those key injuries happen to Arsenal, I'm not sure if Arsenal will be able to recover as City. You know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And yeah, KDB will be back, uh, back probably after the international break as well, which will be great for uh, Arsenal, Manchester City. And for Arsenal, as I said, man, can they win all three of those games? That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. I'm not sure if Arsenal is going to win all three of those games. That's going to be very difficult because Arsenal do have a tough set of games before the next international, before the November international break. Um, and yeah, I mean, now people are going to tell me in the comments and people are going to tell me, what about Liverpool and what about Chelsea? Okay, let's start with Liverpool. Liverpool, they haven't really been that much challenged so far. You know, Liverpool have got uh, seven games played, six wins, one loss. But the thing for Liverpool, what I am concerned with, is that I don't think Liverpool have been truly challenged yet. And if you're looking at Liverpool's upcoming games, this is where it's going to be very difficult for Liverpool. They have to play Arsenal away. They have to play Chelsea at home. Then they have to play against Brighton at home. Then they have to play Villa. And, yeah, I mean, mo- mo- those teams are difficult. Like, right, three of those teams are, as we speak, in the top five as we speak. So, for Liverpool, as I said, man, just looking at their um, Premier League games, it's going to be difficult for Liverpool to go perfect because I, I don't think, I'm not sure if Liverpool will be, be able to win all those games. So that's why I'm not really too sold on Liverpool. Although I do think they'll get top four. 100% they should get top four. Um, but the issue is I don't think they'll compete for a title. I don't think they'll be close to competing for the title. Um, and then as for Chelsea, I mean, Chelsea, they're just not consistent enough. They're not consistent enough for a top four uh, title push that's a bit bridge too far i think they definitely can get top four i think top four is very doable but as far as like you know like to you know make a title charge it's not gonna happen they're just gonna drop points um to teams they shouldn't be and you know i just don't think chelsea will do it uh villa's been great so far this season obviously joanne's been amazing for them villa got done so well four wins two draws one loss so honestly guys this is how they see the top five finishing i think those five teams will be your top five by the end of the season and I think Chelsea and Villa will actually battle out for fourth place. And I think you can maybe say Chelsea may have the upper hand to get fourth because Chelsea are, yes, they're in the European competitions, but they have the luxury to rotate players. Whereas Villa, they're going to be in the Champions League, and that's that, that's going to be difficult for them to rotate. Um, Newcastle haven't been great so far this season. They haven't been that great. Um, and the Tottenham United are struggling. Matches now, I mean, the club is in shambles. The club is in disarray right now. There's, no one knows what's going on with United. And Ten Hag has still not been sacked yet, which is surprising to me. I don't know how Ten Hag has not been sacked yet. And let's be real, guys. The only reason Ten Hag is still in this job is because of the FA Cup win they got last season. Because if it wasn't for the FA Cup win, they wouldn't. They, they Ten Hag probably wouldn't be here. And yeah, I mentioned I've been terrible this season. Defensively, look atrocious. Attacking wise, look atrocious. And I'm looking at United next couple of games, man. Let me just look at their fixture schedule out of curiosity. I just want to see what United has. So they have Brentford at home. Okay, that should be winnable. West Ham away. That could be a bit tricky. And then they got Chelsea. So, honestly, um, and then Leicester City. I mean, honestly, Man United don't have bad fixtures. I think the next couple of games are really winnable for them. I think the only game that might be difficult for them might be Chelsea. Um, and, yeah, United did not have a good month in September, as you can see, man. Only one win this month in September. Two wins, actually, uh, which was against Southampton and Barnsley. So, yeah, not good month for Manchester United there in particular. And I want to look at Tottenham's fixtures real quick. Tottenham, where's Tottenham? Just get Tottenham up real quick. So as you can see, Tottenham. Um, Tottenham had a... Let, let's look at their month real quickly. So Tottenham had a, a decent month, I suppose. You know, they started with the... Um, they lost against Arsenal at home, which wasn't great. Um, but then they beat Brentford. They beat Man United. They, and then they lost to Brighton. So not a really a great month for Spurs. But I think, the, you know, it's been like a mixed bag. They've had some good wins, good good and uh, bad losses. Then they play West Ham next, which they should win. Then Palace. Palace can be tricky. Uh, then Villa. So, and then they have Ipswich Town. And, yeah. So, honestly, for Tottenham, it's not too bad. But, yeah. As I said, for as I said, man, it's it's going to be very interesting to see how that 6th and 7th spot goes down. You know, because you would reckon that it should be between Tottenham and United. But, you know, Brighton have been so far good this season. Fulham has been good. Newcastle are kind of hovering around there. So, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, man. Um, and see all that transpire. All right, so let's go ahead and move on over to La Liga, man. La Liga, man. La Liga. So looking at La Liga, man, I think the major talking point is, I think there's only one team to start. It's Barcelona. Barcelona had a very imperious month of September. In fact, Barcelona, as you can see right here in the league table, Barcelona have won eight games and lost one game. They're league leaders, 24 goals, 
uh, 24 points, sorry, and 28 goals scored, nine goals conceded. And I was just looking at something. I think the ESPN posted this on their Twitter account. I believe Barcelona's front three is the most dangerous front three right now in the world. Rafinha, Laminia Mall, and obviously um, uh, Lewandowski. So, like, Barcelona have been amazing so far this season. I think it's been fantastic for them this season. And what I'm interested to see how Barca does is at the games of October. I think the games of October will be very telling for this Barca team. And as a Barca fan, I'm looking forward to them. So we have Sevilla at home, which we should win, obviously. Then we got Real Madrid away at the El Clasico, which is going to be a very interesting game. There with Espanyol, and then you got Real Sociedad. So I'm va- if I'm a Barca fan, uh, so Barca fans, we should be expecting to beat Sevilla. We should be expecting to beat Espanyol. And we probably should beat Real Sociedad. So I'm looking at Barca games, man. We have very winnable games. I think the only game that's a bit tricky is the Real Madrid game at the El Clasico. That El Clasico game obviously is very up in the air. And, you know, El Clasico, anything can happen. So I'm not going to give a prediction for that one. But the rest of the other games, we should win. And for Barca, as I said, man, we're looking very good. Hansi Flux did an amazing job with this team. And you know what the crazy thing is? This is even our best team, guys. We're doing this with even with still a lot of players injured, which is crazy. Now, for Real Madrid, man, Real Madrid is unbeaten. Real Madrid is unbeaten, guys. But I don't think Real Madrid have been that great so far, guys. Because you can see with Real Madrid what the issue for them is. Because they had a good September month. I'll give you that. September month, they've been pretty much amazing. Like, the only game where they dropped points in was the Madrid derby. Other than that, Real Madrid pretty much had a flawless month in La Liga. But the issue for me with Real Madrid is that I still feel like there's a bit of uncertainty with the team. There's there's this dimension between Mbappe and Vinicius. There's this, like, tension between the two. Who's going to be the guy for the team? And Mbappe hasn't really, like, delivered as much as we expected him to, you know? And I think the issue, because what I think Mbappe was thinking is that I could come into Madrid and the team would adapt to me. But now Mbappe is realizing that I have to adapt to this team. This team isn't going to adapt to me. It's Vinicius' team. Vinicius owns this team. Vinicius is the commander-in-chief of this team. He's the one that's co-piloting everything. So I think Mbappe is struggling to kind of get into that kind of goal-scoring rhythm. Now, Mbappe's been good. It's not like he's been terrible. Obviously, he scored goals here and there. But his performance and his, uh, his performances on the pitch haven't been as good as we made it out to be. So, I'm looking at Real Madrid's games. They got Celta Vigo away, which they should win. Then, well, you know, the El Clasico, we'll, we'll save that for when we get close to El Clasico. Then they got Valencia away, which is tricky. Valencia away is always difficult. They should still win that, though. And then they should be also so nice. So, for Real Madrid, as I said, man, they have very winnable games. And so... This La Liga title race, man, it could come down to the wire, guys. It could come down to the wire. And uh, look at Atletico Madrid, man. Atletico Madrid, man. What is there to say with this team? This team, and I think Tapua, shout out to Tapua, man. Tapua, I think, put it out there best in the chat. This team is like a lion at home because at home, they're amazing. The Juana Metropolitano is like a fortress. But when it comes to on the road, these guys are like pigeons. These guys are like cats, essentially. I don't know what's up with that little commentary on their away form because they're away from home. They are shocking. They're very shocking at away from home because sure, they've been unbeaten, but a lot of the performances have been very scrappy. Like, look at this guys at the muscle cinema, besides the Valencia game, every other game, they're just scraping through one goal, one goal. They haven't been scoring a lot of goals. And that's a problem for Atletico Madrid is that we, inv- we talked about the signs they made this summer, you know, bringing in Gallagher, bringing in Griezmann, bringing in Alvarez. Um, and they haven't really delivered. Now, to be fair, Gallagher has been decent. He hasn't been that bad. I won't be critical of him, but Alvarez hasn't been that amazing so far. Although, to be fair, he's kind of getting to goal scoring rhythm. You know, he just just scored against Real Sociedad yesterday at the Anoeta. But I still feel like for Alvarez, he just hasn't like got the ground running as we expect him to. And for Atletico Madrid, looking at the games they have upcoming, they have Laganas at home, which they should win. Real Betis away. I'm not sure if they're gonna win that game. Las Palmas, they should win. And Mallorca, they, Mallorca game is tricky. Basically, the away games is where I'm worried for Atletico Madrid in particular. Because at home, they should be able to take care of business. They, they're not going to lose much at home. It's just their away form is what worries me the most about Atletico Madrid. And I think for Simeone, man, something's got to change, man. Something's got to change for Atletico Madrid uh, for that one. And looking, at, um, and looking at the other teams that have been struggling so far, man, Villarreal. I think I'm going to say this right now, guys. I think Villarreal and Athletic Club will battle out for that fourth place spot. If I had to give a if I had to give a slight edge, who should get forward? I might edge with Villarreal, although I did initially pick Athletic Club at the beginning of the season. And the reason why I'm saying Villarreal is the slight favorites is because they have no European football. Villarreal have no European football, and Villarreal have been pretty good so far this season. You know, they like against uh, besides against the top three teams, 
they've been able to snap or get wins here and there. And I think for Villarreal, they're looking good this season. And I, I've been really impressed with Villarreal. I think they've had a good season so far. Also, Suna is definitely doing well. Uh, Athletic Club is doing well, of course. And Mallorca, Rio Volcano, man. Rio is doing good. Uh, Mallorca is doing really well. Rio is doing well. Celta is doing well from last season. Betis and Sociedad are really struggling, man. Look at Betis and Sociedad, man. Betis have only scored eight goals, eight goals a season. And three wins, three draws, three losses. And then for Real Sociedad, man, two wins, three draws, and four losses. Seven goals scored. Very, very disappointing for Real Sociedad and Betis because these are the teams you should, you would expect normally to get like fifth and sixth and like that European spots, but they're struggling. But, you know, it's still early days. You know, there's still a lot of games to go. You know, I think they can still rectify things, but it's a bit concerning because usually Sociedad is usually good in the first half of the season and then they kind of fall off the second half. But so far this season, they kind of already fell off, it seems. And then for Valencia, Valladolid, Valad- uh, Las Palmas, Valencia, Las Palmas, man, they shouldn't be in the relegation zone. They absolutely shouldn't be on the relegation zone. But, you know, that's how La Liga is looking like. So, like I said, guys, in terms of the La Liga title race, man, this is going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. This might be – I want to know what you guys think. And maybe I'll, uh, you guys can answer for me in the comments below, guys. Could this be the closest title race in the top five leagues? And then maybe what I'll do in the end is I'll tell you guys which league will be the closest, which league I think will be closest, and we can do all that towards the end of this video. Moving on over to Serie A, man. Serie A, man. I think when I'm looking at Serie A, guys, um, I think the key takeaway from Serie A is that look at how competitive this league is. Look at how competitive this is. 16, 14, 13, 13, 13. Like, it is so competitive. Even even after the t- title race, guys, like, it's all competitive. Every team has done really – every team has been kind of here and there in the same. And that's what I like about Serie A is that I feel like of all the top five leagues, it is the most evenly balanced. I feel like all the teams are kind of roughly around the same caliber. And for Napoli, as I said, man, they've been amazing. I think Napoli have been so far fantastic this season. The only blemish for Napoli this season has been that loss they had to Verona. A lot of people are saying that Napoli might be frauds this season. Napoli weren't going to be great. But, you know, Antonio Conte has done a good job with the team. The team is looking good. McTominay scoring goals. Lukaku scoring goals. And for Napoli in particular, um, it's going to be interesting to see how they do. Can they actually keep up this title charge? Because I'm looking at the next couple of games for Napoli. They got Empoli away, which is going to be interesting. They should win against Empoli. They should beat Lecce. But then this is where we're going to see the true Napoli, how good this team is. Because after that, because after the Lecce game, they play against some of the best teams in the league. Milan, Atalanta, Inter, and Roma. Now, I know Roma's not been good so far. Actually, before Roma's after the national break. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you have to play three of the top, top teams. So we'll see how good Napoli is. Because if Napoli comes through all three of those games unbeaten, then we can say Napoli are title contenders. But until then, I'm not going to say they're title contenders because I still feel like Napoli haven't really truly faced anyone, a significant uh, opponent. I know they got a draw against Juventus on the road, but, you know, Juventus weren't really that great in the game. But I think what Napoli will do against Inter, it, that Napoli-Inter game is going to be very interesting. If Napoli can get a result against Inter at the San Siro, that will really show how good this Napoli team is. That will really show how good this Napoli team is in particular. Uh, moving to Inter, man. Looking at Inter's games, man. Inter have had a decent month. You know, obviously that loss. To, they, Inter haven't really had the best month, if we're being honest with you. You know, they um, you know, got a draw against Monza on the road. But to be fair, they were kind of rotating, resting for the the game in the Champions League, which is understandable. But then they lost to Milan. But they lost to Milan. That was really bad. That was really, really bad, especially considering how they got that big draw on the road against Man City. They followed up with a win against Udinese on the road, and then they beat Torino. So, Inter haven't looked as good as we made it out to be. And I think this season, if Inter is going to win the league, it won't be as it won't be like a landslide like last season. Inter is going to definitely have to work harder for this one. And I think this will be a lot more closer than it was last season. And we're looking at the next couple of games for Inter. They got Roma away, which they that's going to be a difficult, interesting game because they always struggle against Roma for some reason. Then they got Juventus at home, which is going to be interesting. The Empoli, then and Venezia. And then they got Napoli. So I'm looking at Inter games, man. Inter have a pretty favorable fixture list. I think the only game that might be a bit tricky is potentially Juventus and Roma game. But besides, and maybe Napoli as well, to be fair. But I think Inter for me, if they could come through those games without picking up a loss, they're good to go, man. Um, so Inter, man, is side, man. I still think they're the favorites to win this league. I still think they're the best team in Syria, but it won't be as close as it will be a lot closer than in previous seasons. And for Juventus, I'm looking at their games, man. Juventus is a weird team, guys, because Juventus is the type of team that... See, the thing, because look at the Juve, man. 
they got a draw against Roma, which isn't that great. I mean, actually, to be fair, that was the beef with international break. But then they got they played against Empoli, which is tied nil nil. They beat Genoa three nil, and then they they tied against Napoli at home, and they couldn't beat Cagliari at home. Cagliari at home, which is very disappointing, and especially given the fact that they had to concede a, lot, a late penalty there. So for Juventus, I'm looking at the next couple of games. They have Lazio at home, which should be winnable. Lazio is pretty trash on the road. Inter away is going to be tough. Then Parma, then Udinese. And then you got Torino, and then Wow. So, I mean, for Juventus, as I said, Matt, the thing with Juventus, why I like the thing with Juventus, why I really like is their midfield is great, their defense is great. It's just the attack isn't consistent enough. Because look at this, guys. Besides the Genoa and Leipzig, well, well, let's not include the Champions League. So, just looking just in terms of the league, Juventus have only scored more than only scored one goal across five games. Sorry, five goals. Across four games and the Serie A. That's really poor. That's really, really poor for Juventus. That's why I worry about this Juventus team is that I think Vlaovic is key to this team. And if Vlaovic doesn't perform consistently, because I don't think Vlaovic is that amazing a striker. He's a good striker, but he's not like a world class striker. He's on the level like you're loving know, your, your Lewandowski's, your Hollands, your Kane. He's not on the level of those three strikers. And that's the problem for me for Juventus is that Vlaovic is not on the caliber. And to win a league title, you need to have someone that's consistent, that can score you the goals at a consistent rate. And I just don't think Vlaovic is that guy to do so. So that's the reason why I'm very concerned for Juventus. I'm not sure if they can win this league title. Because you need someone to stat pad. You need a stat padder to win a league title, essentially. And Juventus, I just don't think they have a stat padder in that kind of sense to win a league title. But here's the thing. If Juventus can get the goal spread around, then they don't need a stat padder. But if they don't, but but the thing is, I really feel like he's the only real reliable goal scorer. Because I'm sorry, with all due respect to other players, I mean, look, let's just look at the roster, guys. Let's look at the roster of the other players they got, right? You got Yildiz. Yildiz is a good player. I don't know if he's a really a considered goal scorer. Konsa is good. Then you got Mabaglu. I just don't think he's that consistent. Then you have um, Timothy Wea. I don't think he's consistent either. And then you got Milik. You see the problem for Juventus is that there's not a lot of consistent goal scorers in this team. Vlaovic is probably the only one that's like consistent to some degree, but he's not the consistent enough. And the rest are like not as clinical as um, Vlahovic. So it's going to be interesting to see if Juventus, how Juventus can do, man, in this season. Uh, they're looking at Milan, man. Milan, man. Very, very unfortunate for Milan. Because, you know, they won the derby, right? And people think, oh, Milan's back, guys. Milan still haven't been great this season, guys. They haven't been great. They've been struggling this season so far. Yes, their their games in September have been better. Like, as you can see right here, guys, they started off with a 4-0 win against Venezia. They beat Milan. I'm sorry, they beat Inter. They beat Lecce. But then they lost to Fiorentina. With all due respect, they should have lost to Fiorentina because Fiorentina were not that great in the game. De Gea actually came through in clutch and won them that game for them with those two saves from the penalty spot. And for Milan, I'm looking at their next couple of fixtures. They got Udinese at home, which they should win. Bologna away is going to be tough. But, I mean, Bologna has not been that great anymore, so they could probably get a win there. Then Napoli at home is going to be interesting. Monza. Uh, then they got Cagliari. Cagliari. So, uh, for Milan, as I said, man, the problem with this team is that they're just not consistent enough. They'll probably get you wins here and there, but they're not consistent enough. So, I'm sorry. I don't see Milan pushing for the title. And I know Pulisic's been amazing. I, I, I love to see this form of Pulisic. I don't think Pulisic alone is going to be enough to carry Milan to a cadet, so unfortunately. This Milan's defense in particular is really shaky. And that's also another thing that worries me with Milan. So looking at the other teams, we're just going to touch upon the other teams real quickly. And Fonseca is still the coach, which is crazy. He should probably be sacked. I don't think Fonseca is good enough for Milan. I know he just came in this summer, but I'm sorry. The guy is not a good coach whatsoever. He's a very mediocre coach. Lazio is doing well. Shout out to Lazio. Uh, Udinese is doing decent. They're, they're doing really well. Obviously, we expect them to drop off. Torino has been good. Adelanto has been struggling. Roma has been struggling. Adelanto, Roma, and Fiorentina. These are the three teams. They are shockingly doing terrible, especially Roma in particular, man. I'm very concerned with Roma because I actually picked those guys to finish top four, and it's looking like they probably won't. I brought Alonso, very patchy, very inconsistent, you know. And then for Fiorentina, man, less of the better. They're not consistent enough. So if I had to give a prediction for how I think the top four is going to finish, I think it's going to finish Napoli, Inter, Juventus, Milan. I think these are the four teams, and I'll probably say – I'll probably stick with Inter first, Juventus second. I'll probably say Napoli third. I think Napoli will actually be more consistent than Milan. The Milan, I think, will get fourth. And then maybe fifth, you could see maybe Lazio potentially, maybe Adelanza, and then, you know, maybe like um, Roma potentially make up those numbers. And yeah, I think Fiorentina 
might miss out on European football um, altogether, or maybe Lazio. I think I have this feel. I have this hunch feeling that one of Fiorentina or Lazio will not get European football at all um, through the league. At least they might be able to benefit from the top two rule that you know UEFA implemented for the new Champions League thing. But as far as a league style, there I think one of those two teams will finish in eighth place. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. And yeah, once again, man, shout out to Christian Pulisic for balling out in the Serie A. Um, and yeah. And for the Bundesliga, man, Bundesliga, man, Bundesliga time. When you look at the Bundesliga, guys, it's a two-horse race. It's basically between Bayern Munich and Bayern Leverkusen. I know Bayern Leverkusen is three points behind, but that just shows how competitive the Bundesliga is, you know, because Bayern and Leipzig are undefeated. So I think for Bayern Munich, what's very key for them is that I'm looking at their games upcoming for Bayern. They're... The issue for Bayern, in my opinion, is that defensively they're very sketchy. And I think that was very evidently shown against Frankfurt on the road. Because let's be real, guys. Before the Leverkusen game, Bayern have been pretty much beating every team they should be beating. But once it comes to once it came to the Leverkusen game, that's where you see the true version of Bayern Munich. And where you saw the last season struggles in particular. Because Bayern have not won a game in these three games. These three teams are actually good quality teams. And I think it's going to be interesting because Bayern next game is Stuttgart. Stuttgart's a good team, guys. Stuttgart have been great so far this season. Then they got Bochum away, which they should win. And then they got Union Berlin at home, they should win. And they got St. Pauli away. So for Bayern, I think we're going to, like I said, for Bayern, as I said, man, they're going to probably win the games they should be. But what the games will really define to me is those games against Leverkusen, those games against Dortmund, those games against Leipzig. That will probably determine Bayern's fate. Because Bayern last season against those kind of teams did not do particularly well against them. You know, and I think for Bayern, it was to say what's in particular is that that draw against Leverkusen at home was very disappointing. Like, they should have probably won that game, given the amount of chances they had and given how Leverkusen went defensive. And in that Frankfurt game, they, they literally were leading 3-2 and let, excuse me, Frankfurt equalize the last minute with Marmus scoring that goal, man. And shout out to Marmus. Marmus has been amazing. Oh, Elise has been amazing for Bayern as well. I think Elise and Kane has been great. And Kane, man... Are, is there a conversation that Kane is bad in big games? Because I'm starting to feel like Kane is not good in big games. Man. I'm starting to feel like that because Kane has not scored in any of the three big games and these three games. Now, he did get an assist against Frankfurt, but in terms of big games, Kane has not really been that great. So it's a bit concerning, man, for Harry Kane in particular. But as I said, man, Bayern Munich, man, it'll be interesting to see if they could win back the league title from last season. Uh... Looking ahead, looking back to the standings right here, guys. So, Leipzig, I know Leipzig have been good so far. You know, they're still unbeaten. But Leipzig, man, they're just not been that amazing as their points may suggest. Because, I'm sorry, after they beat um, after they beat Leverkusen away, they couldn't beat Union Berlin at home. They couldn't beat St. Pauli um, away. They beat Augsburg. But, like, the thing is, Leipzig haven't been great. Like, besides the, uh, besides the Augsburg game, they've been struggling to score goals. They've genuinely been struggling to score goals. And that's very concerning for Leipzig is that they're supposed to, like, build upon that. You know, but instead they haven't really followed it up. And I think I'm worried for Leipzig because I look at their next couple of games. Mines, that's going to be a tricky game. Freiburg at home. Dortmund away is going to be tough. And they got Gladbach. So, Leipzig in particular, man, I'm just not really sure what to make of this team, man. They're very inconsistent. That's the, probably the way to put it. Frankfurt's been amazing, man. Shout out to Frankfurt. I think Frankfurt has been one of the best upcoming teams. I think they have over, they have surprised me. If there's, like, one team in the top five leagues that have surprised me the most, it's Frankfurt. I think Frankfurt's been looking really good this season because last season was really disappointing for Frankfurt. This season has been amazing. Marmush has been amazing. Ekatech has been great, too. And I'm looking at Frankfurt's next couple of games. Frankfurt, uh, Leverkusen away is going to be tough. You're in Berlin. They could get a result there. They could beat Bokim. And then they could, maybe they could get something like a Stuttgart. So I'm looking at Frankfurt, man. Frankfurt have definitely punched above their weight. And, you know, you can see right here, man, Frankfurt only one loss this season, which was to Dortmund away. So Frankfurt have been great so far this season. Freiburg's also doing really well. They're definitely doing really well. As I, I'm, I'm, I also didn't expect Freiburg to do this well. But we have to keep in mind, Freiburg didn't have, doesn't have any European games. So maybe it shouldn't be that surprising, but still. And for Leverkusen, man, the thing with Leverkusen is this, guys. People don't want to admit this, but this is the truth, guys. W defending your league title is harder than winning a league title. There's a reason why only a few clubs have been able to defend their league title in the last couple of years, i.e. Manchester City, Barcelona, you know, your PSG, your uh, Bayern Munich. There's a reason why, because Leverkusen this month, man, have not been that great. You know, they, 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 they screwed up a 2-0 lead against Holstein Kiel. They should have won that game. Then they were not great against Leverkusen, Bayern Munich. They got lucky to get a point. 
They beat Wolves by a narrow margin 4-3. And they trash Hoffenheim because Hoffenheim have not been good so far this season. So really, Leverkusen have not been as convincing as you may expect. And a lot of people, myself included, think that Leverkusen can defend their title. But now I'm starting to get worried because I'm looking at Leverkusen the next couple of games. They got Frankfurt at home, which they should win. They should be worth Bremen. But the Stuttgart game, that's going to be a tough game. They got Bochum away as well. So as much as I say Leverkusen should beat Frankfurt, Frankfurt's been so far good this season. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Leverkusen do in their next couple of games. Are they going to be able to keep this winning form and be dominant? Because, like I said, guys, the only dominant win they had this month was pretty much against Hoffenheim on the road in the in the Bundesliga. So, um, and, you know, Hoffenheim have been pretty awful this season so far, so it's not really much surprising there. Then we got Dortmund, man. Another team that's been underperforming, man. Dortmund's been another team that's been very disappointing this season, guys. I've been very disappointed to see what Dortmund's been doing because I'm looking at Dortmund, man. Look at the month of September, right? Okay, they start off with their win wins against Heidenheim, which they should be beating. Then they got thrashed against Stuttgart. And then, sure, I know they beat Bokeem 4-2, but they had to come from behind in that game. They were 2-0 down against Bokeem, and they had to score late goals to win that game. So that's a bit concerning. And then they lost to Union Berlin, which, I'm sorry, Union Berlin, they shouldn't be losing to Union Berlin, especially what after what Union Berlin have been going through the last couple of years. So Union Berlin isn't the same. And I'm looking at Dortmund's last couple of games. They got St. Pauli at home, which they should win. Augsburg away is going to be tricky. We always struggle against Augsburg. Then they got Leipzig at home, which they should. Leipzig is going to be tricky. And they got Mines away. So for Dortmund, as I said, man, kind of what I was saying for Atletico Madrid. They're very good at home. But for some reason, when it comes to their away form, they're very much like cats. They're, they're not good on the road, guys. And that's what makes this Dortmund team very hard to get rid of, guys. So because Dortmund has a set, man, a lot of people think they, they can maybe challenge for the title. They're already four points behind Bayern. They're already four points behind. And, and I mean, look at the goal difference. It's already on a one goal difference. It's crazy, man. Stuttgart, it, it, like I said, it's kind of expected Stuttgart will not be the same as last season. You know, they're kind of struggling. Um, but, you know, they're still doing decent. But, you know, the one team that's been very shockingly bad is Hoffenheim. They're in the Europa League, guys, and they're six in the league. You know what makes it really sad for Hoffenheim? They lost to Werder Bremen after being 3 0 up and getting a red card. That's, that's just shocking. It's absolutely shocking. It's like, how can you lose against a team when you were 3 0 up? It's just shocking, man. Hoffenheim, very disappointing for them. They've been awful so far this season. And I'm very concerned, man, because I really want Hoffenheim to do well. But yeah, I mean, they might have to succumb to a bottom table finish. Like, Obviously, they won't get relegated. I think they're too good to get relegated, but they'll probably not be able to compete for a European spot this season. They will probably have to be uh, the lower end of the table. So, like I said, guys, it should be Bayern Munich and Bayern Leverkusen final now for the title. At the final, moving to the league on, man. League on, man. League on. PSG, Monaco, and Lons are unbeaten. And let's be real, guys. The title race is between Monaco, PSG, and Marseille. And What's very interesting is that Monaco is actually the league leaders right now, which is amazing. And so shout out to Barcola. Barcola has been amazing. He's actually the league top scorer. He's, you could say in some ways he's pretty much the, the face of this new PSG team now after obviously Mbappe left over the summer. And I'm looking at Monaco's next couple of games because I actually think Monaco could actually give a run for PSG for the league title, guys. Because I'm looking at Monaco's next couple of games. They got Lille at home. They got Nice away. They got Andres at home. And they got Strasbourg, um, Strasbourg away. So I'm looking at Monaco's games, guys. Now that Lille game could be tough, and maybe that Nice game as well. But that Lille game is at home, so that's the cushion for them. But that Nice game could be a bit tricky because Nice are not are pretty tough to break down defensively. So that's gonna be interesting. So if Monaco would actually win the league, man, that would actually be a huge statement on what to see what Monaco have been doing. And shout out to Florian Balogun, man, my American guy, he's been amazing. And then let's say PSG for last, Marseille, man. Marseille have been great, you know. Uh, Marseille got that win against um, Nice at home, which was great. Then they beat Mar Leon on the road. Even down a man is pretty impressive. And then they and they lost to Strasbourg, and then they put and they tied against Andrews at home. I think the only little bad result was probably the last two games. But I'm looking at Marseille next couple of games, guys. They have Montpellier away, and then they have La Classique at home. I think of Marseille. You know what? I'm gonna say this right now, guys. If Marseille can beat PSG at home. That will be a statement in itself. Because I don't remember the last time Marseille defeated PSG at home in the league. And I don't remember the last time Marseille won the league. In fact, actually, let's go look at here, guys. Um, then they got Nantes, and then they got Auxerre. So let's actually check, guys. When was the last time 
Marseille actually won the league. I actually don't know at the top of my head. When was the last time they won the league? The honors. You will see right here, guys. The last time they won the league was in 2009. Can the Zerbi make history and get Marseille to win their first league title since 2009? They haven't even won a league title in the 2010 decade. That's absolutely insane. Marseille been very disappointing in the last couple of years, and I think this will be massive if they could do this. And for PSG, as I said, obviously they should win this league with all due respect, but PSG have not been as good as you may have expected because looking at PSG right here, guys, so PSG, they got the win against um, Stad Brest at home, which they should be winning. And then they tied against Reims on the road, which isn't that great. And then they beat Rennes, and they couldn't beat Nice on the road, which is very nice, I have to say. So looking at the next couple of games for PSG, man, they got Strasbourg at home. They got Marseille away, which will be very interesting. The Lons, and then Angers. So, I mean, for PSG, as I said, man, they should be able to win those games. But I'm very interested to see that La Classic. The La Classic will be uh, very interesting right here, guys. So... I'm looking at this right here, man. We, we could genuinely have a three-horse race in the league on. So now let's go ahead, and I'm going to do this at the end, guys. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys which um, – I'm going to tell you guys which leagues I think will um, – sorry, let me do this way. Um, which leagues I think will be the closest title race. So I'm looking at right here, guys. I think I think fifth will be league on. I still think PSG will win this league. So I think that will be the worst title race. Then fourth, I was going to say, is EPL. I think EPL will be the worst and the second worst because I still think Man City is going to do it. The third, I'm going to actually say, is going to be the mm, Bundesliga. I think Bundesliga is going to be uh, the third. And the second, I'm going to say, is going to be uh, La Liga. And the first, I'm going to say, is Serie A. That's my order of how I think the top five leagues, my the, what I think will be the most interesting to the most boring. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments below, guys. Uh, please run a like and subscribe. And if there's any other major talking points, please let me know. Um, this video came out to be around 37 minutes. So if you made it all the way, Shout out to you guys. And yeah, man, like I said, guys. And if you you know what else? If you made it all the way to the end of this video, guys, write in the comments below. Hashtag 87 football army. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, man. That just shows who I know who watched all this. Anyways, please run a like and subscribe. And peace out.